this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If you are 13 years or younger, this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill them. Wait a second. Oh, no, 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 no. If you return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. He likes movies. We like movies. Septo Sid versus the world. 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 Greeting, you're on Septum Sen versus the world. I'm Septum Sen. This is Kotobuki Jake. Hi. And we're here to show you what we got. Yeah. Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. Oh boy. Well, we are online, more out of a bit of caution today. I work mm-hmm. out of a hospital at nights, and I was exposed to something that. I'd rather not be exposed to. And though I don't feel bad, best not to take chances in this day and age. Hmm. Right. But that's one of the problems of being in a hospital. (laughs) Who wants to go first? Do you have something big for the finish? Uh, Not really. I mean, it's, it's really cool, but it's not exactly a big... To be honest, I, I was honest last week when I said, well, I was completely tapped out of video and DVD last week, but I still had some media left to present. So really tonight it's half new stuff and half old stuff. So I've got a fun one to end on, but it's not exactly new. So <laughs> well, let's go with that and I'll start us off. Okay. I actually have a theme this time. Ooh. Yeah, I know. It's, it's weird. It is uh, the Eight Films to Die For series. I'm going to try and put like a little logo in between. Mm-hmm. So the Eight Films to Die For was a. It was called After Dark Horror Fest, which mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> started doing in the early 2000s. It was. It ran four, uh, basic four seasons essentially, where you had. It started off with basically these films. That had that were so horrifying that they supposedly could not be shown in theaters. So they had mm. the festival to where you could all go in and see them, and then they had the DVD releases. I wish I could have been to one of these festivals because they showed all eight films, and you could, you dressed up. It was just like a general good time, something that you don't really have these days uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> due to reasons. <laughs> mm-hmm. So after the four times that they did it, they kind of fell off. They did some sort of After Dark uh, production stuff, which that was all over the place. I don't have any of that. But then they did a new After Dark Horror Fest with the uh, eight films to die for again. So I ended up finally completing all eight. I took my time because I was like, okay, these will go down in value because all the other After Dark films went down in value. But only one title went down in value. The rest either stayed the same or went out of print, which, as you know, does not exactly lower the value. Mm, Right. But I do have all eight films. So I'm going to run us through all eight of them in alphabetical order, going from the lowest in the alphabet up to the top, because the top one was the pain in the butt and the last one that I managed to get. So let's go get started. So I have here the first one in here, Windwalkers. Mm. This is actually how you'll see them all presented. They're DVD only. You see the plain spines, and you got your summary on the back. <clears throat> A U.S. soldier returns from home returns home from captivity to find that his best friend and fellow former POW has gone AWOL. While out on an annual hunting trip with his friend's father and some extended family, 
the group comes under attack by an ancient Native American curse that has mysterious connections to his best friend's heritage and the prison in which the soldiers were once held captive. So that sounds like a fun one there. Hmm. All right, that's my first of the eight. All right. So my next one, um, absolutely, <laughs> I, I guarantee you this was not in the slightest bit planned that I ended up getting one that will have some connection to our... Um, uh, vlogcast this evening, but uh, we were at Target the other day, and I'll be honest, I really wanted to pick up a movie, and I kind of walked away from the movie section. I was feeling good about myself, and then I found the uh, you know that little corner that they sometimes have with some cheap stuff, and found a movie on sale for five bucks, and I was like. I'd really like to have that movie, and I could pay five bucks for it. So I went ahead and grabbed a copy of Detective Pikachu, <laughs> which this was a fun movie. We had we had good times with this when we watched it, and uh, I, I figure, like I said, it's worth five bucks, and you know, it comes with Detective Mode. <laughs> back to back with Sonic what? the Hedgehog. If you I know. Hedgehog, I well, you have, uh, you have uh, if <laughs> if if a I really had the level of interest that the rest of the group has in tonight's vlogcast, and B I'd even thought why well, I even watched it in time to know I might have tried to pick up Sonic, but oh well, we well, got least, that one though. At least you know who Sonic Chu is. <laughs> And I'm not sure I'm better for it, but... <laughs> oh, you're obviously better for it. <laughs> All right. So um, this next one here is called The Wicked Within. Mm. Kind of a cool cover there. First, you mm -hmm. see a shadow, but you see this little uh, girl with mm -hmm. her dolly in the um, door. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's the back of it. A year after the sudden death of a child, a family gathering takes place while peculiar, unexplainable events occur. Tension over these circumstances cracks the veneer of cordial cordial cordiality <laughs> and dark secrets emerge. So this looks like a fun one, kind of a haunting slash maybe an Amityville type. Which would be kind of cool. I have a, actually I have a new Amityville pickup, but I'll show that off next time. Um, this kind of cool. Seems like there's no shortage of Amityville films they're making, so why not? <laughs> really, there has been. How many came out last year? <laughs> I don't know, two or three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, so next up, um, I presented a couple weeks ago. A whole crap load of Blu-rays and I think a couple DVDs that I picked up at Second and Charles last uh, last time I was there. I also picked up a handful of CDs. They were a buck a piece, and well, I can't turn down great CDs for a buck a piece. I'm not going to necessarily spend hours going through them to make sure I find all the ones I want, but. I'll give them a once over. And I ended up getting some good ones. This first one is one that uh, <clears throat> is actually owned by other family members, but I did not have a copy. I, I don't think. I'm, I'm going to be honest. There's about a 5% chance I do have this one and just forgot about it. But it's a good one. It's um, Alabama. Christmas too. Um, I do enjoy Alabama going back years. Um, this has some good stuff. Uh, the night before Christmas is actually one of my favorite Christmas recordings, and it's not what you'd probably think from hearing the title. <laughs> and um, there's some good stuff on there generally. It's mostly original material, which can be... Uh, 
a roll of the dice with Christmas stuff, but mm-hmm. <laughs> but sometimes can be pretty good. And like I said, for a dollar, what the hell? <laughs> for a dollar. Exactly. <laughs> you know what's interesting is mm-hmm. I ordered the first CD in ages. From an actual band, I mean, not to say that the ones that I have ordered have, haven't, <laughs> but something that's actually professionally produced and recorded. Right. So it's kind of a rare thing. Even though they did kind mm-hmm. of crowdfund it, it's still kind of a cool thing. But I look right. forward to pulling it off when it does get here. It's been a while. And I actually cool. look forward to playing it on a regular basis till I get to know it. And that's even rarer. I haven't done that mm. since some. Um, uh, I Bob Star. I did that for Bob, mm. Star, which was kind of cool. Mm. So next one on my list is unnatural. Mm. So that kind of goes along with your Christmas theme there. You yes, very snow, much so. No, and uh, they they walk up to the tree, and the tree has teeth. <laughs> but uh, there's a picture in the back. Yeah, I don't know about teeth per se, but I guess this one, maybe those are fangs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. A morally ambiguous corporation, as they are, Yes. experiments with genetic modification resulting in the advent of a bloodthirsty man-eating creature. Mm. But the creature escapes a group of unsuspecting Alaskan natives and their inexperienced guests which includes a high-maintenance celebrity photographer, a pair of models, uh, sorry, and a pair of models, become prey for the abomination in a horrifying game of cat and mouse. Nice. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. All right. (laughs) All right. So my next one, once again, a CD, Includes a song called Air of December, so I guess we're uh, sticking with the wintry tune here for for now, a theme. But this is one I kind of like the, I love the title, and I kind of like the overall weird-ass artwork on this thing. Um, But this is a CD by Edie Brickell and the New Bohemians, and it's called Shooting Rubber Bands at the Stars. And... um, I have never heard this album before. This is, wow, this is 88. This is way back in the day. Um, I know Brickell, honestly, mostly from her work with, um, she's done a bunch of stuff with uh, Steve Martin and with the Steep, was it Steep Canyon Rangers? Like, they've done a couple recordings together. Uh, she's kind of folksy, kind of random-ass weird stuff yeah, that is that probably cover. not the best description what's that i yeah, love that cover yeah i know it's it's pretty fun and then it's like that's the back side of it there like i said the artwork on this is intriguing but um i'm looking forward to this i've never like i said i've never heard this album i'm not very good at really listening to albums very often anymore I tend to just kind of rip them to my computer and play them randomly. Uh, But I probably should give this one a go before I do that. And I look forward to it. And again, you know, I buy that for a dollar. (laughs) Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see here. So this next one is Suspension, which is the Mm. only one of these I've accidentally bought twice. other copy because I bought it from a, a second-hand seller. Uh, so I got this cheap used, even though it's never been opened, um, which is good because online it's out of print and it costs a little bit more money. Oh, wow. Emily is a high school student with a penchant for drawing gruesome pictures about in her sketchbook. There's a reason for her obsession with horrific images. Her father, Tom, once went on a murder spree and is now residing in a mental hospital. Mm. Uh, She's home alone, babysitting her mute little brother. There's always got to be a mute little brother. Obviously. (laughs) Tom escapes and targets Emily and her friends during a bloody killing rampage. Mm. I love that. (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. Sounds like fun. Oh, <laughs> All right. This one also sounds like fun. This is actually apparently an album that was kind of a big deal when it came out. Although I kind of missed that. And by the time that I was really listening to the song that everyone knows off of this disc, it had already kind of faded, you know, from the forefront a little bit, but it was still playing heavily on the, uh, what was it, B103.7, I think it was, back in the day, and a couple of those. Um, but that is a CD by the Four Non Blondes called Bigger, Better, Faster, More. And the song that everyone knows off of this is called What's Up which I like it. I think it's a good song. I know it's overplayed, but I like it. And I was more than willing to add this album to the collection for a dollar. I mean, you know, it is a piece of uh, 90s rock history. So, yeah, be good times. Um, the 90s. <laughs> you know what song I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I know what song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it may have been 30 years but mm -hmm. <laughs> it yeah it has been 30 years <laughs> <sighs> i'm old you're older ha huh? <laughs> <laughs> i know hey just just a number all right well yeah uh, right <laughs> next is the cheapest one that i believe is still in print and is still running mm. cheap and that is mm. rekill out of all of them, mm. probably the one that most people would probably get because it's days at fourteen dollars, and uh, which is better than the rest. It stay at twenty to thirty dollars, or uh, as Dave has seen it, apparently two thousand and some dollars per. Um, wow! I would not be collecting any of these at two thousand and some per. <laughs> no, I'll sell one for it. I've, I've got an extra suspension if you want it. I'll sell it for $2,000. <laughs> well, I, I, that would require a suspension of disbelief to think that's worth that. So it's been five years since the outbreak that wiped out 85% of the world's population. But the war between reanimates and humans... Reanimates is just another fancy word for zombie, more than likely. Mm -hmm. uh, it wages on. Most of the major cities are still uninhabitable. Within a few surviving cities, the Rians have been segregated into zones and are policed by the R Division and the Quasi SWAT Unit. <laughs> mm. uh, let's see here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a zombie movie. Post-apocalyptic zombie movie, but uh, mm -hmm. gotta love those. Those are pretty popular these days. Maybe that's why it's in the lower bend because they were trying to like sell that one. Maybe they thought that would sell the most. Right, could be, could be. Do you like a good zombie film? Uh, I, <laughs> I like a good zombie film. That good part is very, very, very important. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. So I'm just double checking. Oh, okay. That's right. So next up, we have a movie that when it came out, um, I was actually quite a fan of this movie. Again, okay. So we have gotten through the <sighs> presentation of new material. Uh, to round out tonight, I'm going to look at a handful of items that were buried in my uh, <laughs> previously viewed material, and I think there's a good chance that I have not presented them. I cannot swear I've never talked about them on this channel, but I've not presented them. Um, so the first one is arguably the film, or at least one of the films, they got Mark Webb the job of directing The Amazing Spider-Man, for better or for worse, 
Um, I guess as we've learned that having the name Mark Webb doesn't mean you're automatically the best person for the job, but uh, still did a good job with the first one at least. But before that, there came this little movie called 500 Days of Summer, which starred uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Zoe Deschanel and is a very unusually put together film a romantic comedy about a guy who's way more interested in the girl than she is in him and it is a good thing that the film is told out of order let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good, fun film, very unusual structure, excellent acting, if I remember correctly, excellent soundtrack. And um, I just really like both of them. Gordon Levitt is a great actor. He's a lot of fun. Channel, I'm not sure she's the strongest actress, but I like her. She has a, she's likable, very, very much so, and... I just enjoyed this movie, so I figured that'd be a good one to share with y'all. You saw that one, right? Yeah, it's actually a little bit cleaner than my copy. Ah. <laughs> my copy was very used. <laughs> ah. But this one is not, as we talk mm -hmm. about murder in the dark. Well, where else are you going to do it? And you could murder in the light. So You could. We got this here. Uh, so when a group of young people camping in the ruins of a medieval Turkish town play a part mm -hmm. game called Murder in the Dark, always fun to play in, you know, medieval Turkish town, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. soon discover that someone is taking the game too far. Produced in an experimental shooting style, this murder mystery features a cast of actors who are not allowed to see the script. Um, hmm. That makes it really hard to deliver it, the lines correctly. Um, yeah. Choices interactively change the shape of the story. They had to use clues to solve the mystery laid out before them by the filmmakers. But that's an interesting idea. It's like, okay, this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you can do. That could play out really good or really bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, really bad. Right. Oh, boy. <laughs> Your turn. All right. So, my next one, I went to look the director up, and I'm saddened to see that apparently he is no longer with us. Um this is a film by Kim ki Duk, who apparently died in 2020, you know, naturally. <laughs> and uh, was that? It's a good year for dying. <laughs> well, I know there's a good year for it, but it was a popular year for it. Um, actually, nine days shy of his 60th birthday. Uh, but ki Duk Kim did a phenomenal film that I think I still don't have in my collection. I don't know why. <laughs> it's called Spring, Summer, Fall, Winter, and Spring. But the film that I do have that I figured I would share with y'all is a film called Three Iron, which is a really unusual movie, as you can probably tell from the cover. It's unusual mysterious drifter taesu enters other people's lives as easily as he breaks into their unoccupied homes instead of stealing their riches he repays his host unknowing hospitality by fixing broken items cleaning up even doing their laundry but when he sneaks into a sprawling mansion he discovers a beautiful lonely wife named sun hua trapped in a loveless marriage Etc. 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 Golf plays into it, which is partly where the title comes from. Um, the wife is very cute. I'm giving that. Um, this was an interesting one and very odd. And I do want to see more by this director. I've just been kind of lazy about it, 
and very lazy about getting them. I'm not sure how many of them are even available in, in this country, but like I said, it's kind of sad to hear that he passed away last year. It makes me think even more. I want to try and seek some of these out, but yeah. glad to have that one. <laughs> If anything, it makes it easier to catch up. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. Yeah, I got to look on the bright side of life. <laughs> Always look on the bright side. Yeah. Well, I have a fun one here. A fun one? The first one I ever got of this group, and I had mm -hmm. to get it. It was on my list. Rekill was actually one of the second earliest because of the price. I mean, I was waiting for others to come down to that price, and that was the first mm -hmm. one. And this one was just so ludicrous that when I saw what it was, I had to not only see it as soon as possible, but I had to get it. And the price, mm -hmm. I, okay, bite the bullet, I will pay the price. Huh. Lumberjack man. Nice. Now, I think I've told you about this film before. But mm -hmm. allow me to tell the rest of the audience about this one. Lumberjack Man is kind of like your average Friday the 13th type film. But Jason in this film, instead of just carrying around a machete, has a couple of axes and he carries mm -hmm. a cart of pancakes. <laughs> Yes. And, uh, or flapjacks, I guess, because, you know, lumberjack. And because uses, reasons. And he uses the blood of those he slaughtered as the syrup. <laughs> uh, I thought you, say he was, you were going to say he was going to use it like in place of bacon grease or whatever. You got to admit, <laughs> that, that is just, is it, it's as absurd as it sounds. Hmm. This is the most fun I'm probably going to have with the eight films to die for this time around. I hate to mm -hmm. say it, but mm. it really was a fun movie. I can't wait to eventually. I'm just going to one day get into these and just watch all eight back to back because mm -hmm. they're the only ones in, the, in that series I haven't watched. Mm. Because I used to, when I got the whole thing, they'd come up in box sets, and I would just watch them all back to back. Right. And I got to do that. I can't wait to get back into this one again. Mm -hmm. That's what you can do for your. Um, uh, I don't think I haven't. Uh, I haven't actually thought about bringing it forward for my birthday. Uh, thing. But uh, if I ever get a, ca a camp-oriented uh, movie uh, month, uh, I'm putting this one up. Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say, like for your usual October thing or whatever, you could do all eight of them for that. You know what? <laughs> yeah. Now this time we're so, playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my last couple have a little bit of a mini theme. Um, mini -me. They're both really, 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 really classic television shows that I'm very, very happy to have. One of them I I had watched as it aired and sought after for years. The other one was the opposite. I had known about it for years. I had seen the movie based on it, but I had never seen an episode. I don't think I ever saw an episode until I bought the series. And then I sat down and marathoned it, and I just loved it. And that is a little old show that I think some people have heard of um, called The Addams Family. Uh, have the complete series here. The old school one with Carolyn Jones as Morticia, John Astin as Gomez, and a lot of guest stars from big and small. Um, certain elements of this show, unfortunately, have not aged well. There is some use of the yellow face in a handful of episodes. There are some other... <sighs> less than progressive things that they did. But in overall, this show was unbelievably progressive for its time. And <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs> it's just so fun. Carol, even though I absolutely love, love Angelica Houston's Marticia and Raul Julia's Gomez, 
I just these these two are different, but they're still. You know, every now and then you get characters where you can have totally different renditions, and they're both as good. You know, oh, and it's hard. To, what's that? What's he's that? a great Gomez in the in that version, the original series. Right, and and honestly, Julia and Aston are closer to each other. Jones and Houston are the ones that are very different, and um, also the kids are quite different. Fester is very different between the two versions. Um, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The kids are different. Um, I really, I mean, I love Christina. You will not uh, surpass Christina Ricci's version, I think. Um, although recently I have become uh, a fan of the Adult Wednesday Adams web series, and it's a shame that was forced to stop because it was good. But, <laughs> but, and of course, this has one of the classic <laughs> TV themes. This is one of the best TV themes ever released. So, really good show. Not super, super long. You can actually knock this out easily enough. So, I was very happy to finally pick that up. <laughs> I don't know why, but there's always been kind of a pairing of that with the Munsters. Hmm. Another uh, show I did not watch growing up. What's weird is that <laughs> What's weird is I noticed that there's two types of people. People who actually mm -hmm. grew up with the Munsters and those that grew up with the Adams family. I and was those actually, who grew up with neither. Uh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> I was one of those who actually uh, saw the Munsters a lot growing up. I didn't see the Adams family until I was in my 20s. The movies, mm -hmm. yes, but the show I didn't yeah. see in my 20s. I used mm -hmm. to watch the Munsters all the time when I was in my teens. It was just mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, last one. And the reason why I reversed it is because this was also the hardest one for me to get. Because it went out of print, went into mm -hmm. print, technically out of print. I'd order it, and then people would say, oh, sorry, we don't have that. And they refund me. But finally, I was able to get a copy of this. I paid a little bit more than I wanted to. But not as much as, say, Dave had said. Um, <laughs> I finally got the last of the eight. Which is what, by the way, I was going to do this earlier, but I did not get bastard until the end. But mm. Actually, remember I was talking about doing those eight pickups a while back? Mm -hmm. Because this one was marked as getting ready to ship, and then last minute they said, oh, sorry, we don't have that. That's out of print. Like, why uh, are you telling it if it's out of print? <laughs> that seems to be happening a lot nowadays. Gamera and the uh, Valid Evergarden and all. <laughs> so, Five Strangers, Newlywed Serial Killers, a Suicidal hmm. Cop, and a Runaway Brother and Sister become a suspect and victim of when masked murderer makes its presence known in an isolated mountain town. That's an interesting group of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, newlywed serial killers. Right there. <laughs> so is this the sequel to So I Married an Axe Murderer? I don't know. It's also like, and you got a suicidal cop. Ah. And then the runaway brother and sister, that's, that's like the tame one of the group. <laughs> I feel sorry for them, actually, you know. It's yeah. Like, there, but this is the whole of it. I mean, they kind of look... Mm -hmm. I actually do like how the titles line up like that. Yeah. It's very plain, but there's something mm -hmm. about how plain those are. Well, it's kind of like... You know. It's kind of like the Kino Lorber releases. They're not that showy, but they they look good together. You yeah, know? they do look good together. Too bad they're going to be spread out alphabetically throughout the collection. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Unless you put them together, you know. <laughs> I will forward this to you for okay. the next. All right. And, you know, you were talking about how there's two kinds of people, you know, those that grew up with Adam's family and those that grew up with uh, Munsters. I would also say, you could say this way, you could say there's two kinds of people. Those who were introduced to Briscoe, to Briscoe, uh, 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 <laughs> no, I just tipped my hand, sorry. There are those who were introduced to Bruce Campbell through the Evil Dead, and there were those who introduced to him through 
The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Or Jack of all <laughs> trades. Well, yeah, if you really want, but you know, like I said, there are options, but you know what I mean. Because uh, I know you were more the Evil Dead crowd. <laughs> well, yeah. But anyway, The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. is a show that we watched as it aired. It actually, Campbell did a mall tour in promotion of the show. We went to see him, and they cut off the line when we were not that far away. <sighs> Very annoying. <laughs> well, yeah, but it would have been nice to say I met Bruce Campbell. I mean, that would have been cool, especially because I had no freaking clue at the time what Evil Dead was. But... <laughs> But and this definitely goes down as one of the most criminally shortened series. They only had one season. Now, granted, they put a lot of money into this, and they had 27 hour-long episodes. So that's probably why it only ran for one season. But still... <laughs> This is a really, 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 really good show. One of my favorite TV shows. It's a steampunk western starring Campbell as a U.S. Marshal. Or rather, he's a bounty hunter whose father was a U.S. Marshal, Briscoe County. And his father is murdered by John Bly and his gang. And the bounty hunter, Briscoe, goes after them one by one. Uh, along with another bounty hunter, Lord Boulder, who's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. And he's got his lawyer friend, Socrates, and Dixie Cousins, who's a showgirl, who's his kind of sort of fling. Um, and it's just a really, really, really fun show. Really fun. And the theme that it has with Adam's family, in addition to being a kick-ass series is that this one also features John Aston, but in a supporting role. He plays Professor Wickwire, who's pretty much Emmett Brown, you know, after he, if he had indeed stayed in the Old West and not hooked up with a woman, you know. Well, actually, no, he has a daughter, so he must have hooked up with someone. But you know what I mean. <laughs> But John Aston does his best Emmett Brown impression, which is kind of fun that, you know, since Christopher Lloyd was in Adam's Family, the movie, there's a nice little Christopher Lloyd connection there. Um, but, yeah, it's just a great series. And I figured this would be as good a time as any to present it. Actually, this was one. You talk about things holding their value and even being absurdly expensive. This took a while for me to get because for a while it was expensive. And I think I finally jumped on it when it was around 30 or so. <laughs> and now you can regularly find it for around 20. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what, why that is. For a while there, this was like $60, $70 series if you could find it. So... Yeah. I definitely wouldn't be getting it for 60 to 70 but uh, right. maybe one day it would be cool to have it in the collection. I've seen it at least, uh, right. as you showed it to me. Well, I tried to. I tried showing it to the group, but they lost interest after like a couple episodes. I don't know why. Uh, I would have thought George would have gone, for, and Susan especially, with the steampunk angle, but I don't know. I, I admit I didn't get into it as much when I watched it, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I didn't hate it. So yeah, well, I know you're hit or miss on westerns in the first place, but you know. But. Now, my first introduction was not necessarily Evil Dead. It was, but it wasn't. My first introduction <laughs> to Bruce Campbell was Army of Darkness. Right. Yes, and I, I saw like that before Evil Dead back then. <laughs> yes, I saw Army of Darkness first as well. Um, and I had probably seen, well, I know I had seen a couple of his other films. Like, he's done a bunch of stuff in tiny roles with Sam Raimi's Buds the Cullens. You know, he had that brief role in Fargo. He had a small, well, a pretty key supporting role in Hudsucker Proxy. Um, so there were probably a few that I had seen, you know, before. But, yeah. Well, with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and share. 
And mm -hmm. all willing, we'll be back together next week. Mm -hmm. But there won't be any pickups next week because ah. next week is our award show. We're going to be busy. Dressed up in our finery. And we're going yeah, right. to be hosting the Versus Awards. And most of that mm -hmm. filming time is going to be spent there, though we will have an anime uh, discussion that night. So that's going to be fun. No, oh, yeah, we will. On uh, Those Who Hunt Elves. Nice quality okay. work there. Yeah. <laughs> the sequel to the series Those Who Hunt Elvis. Ah. Well, good night. What are you doing?